So I had another patient uh, this past week, had uh, significant plaque, but it was calcified and stable. And my coaching consultation to them was that that's stable. You just need to keep it there. Nope, nope. I want it all out. And I said, I don't think that's practical, but go for it. And as I continued to go through this discussion with this patient, it made me realize I've not really given the viewers of this channel any of the scientific evidence, the proof behind that statement. I could tell that patient was feeling like, you know, you're just asking me to trust you. I'm a, I, I want to see it myself kind of person. So that's actually what we're going to do. We're going to look at one of the classic studies which shows that calcified plaque is much more stable. Here's the journal, Jack Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Is calcified plaque really more stable? And the title on the on it, again, April 2004, the first author was Honda. Echolucent cardiac plaques, or, excuse me, echolucent carotid plaques predict future coronary events in patients with coronary artery disease. So uh, one thing I would warn you, don't get, if you look this article up, don't get too bogged down on that term echolucent. I was thinking lucent means light, so therefore it's the one on the right. I got it backwards. These, uh, if you'll notice, all of these authors are Japanese. I think they probably picked a maybe unfortunate term. Maybe that or I'm just, my, my wife likes to accuse me of not speaking English very well anyway. But I, I worked for Toyota for a decade. This was not the first time that I went, I wasted I, on this one over an hour on uh, bad translation and I don't know if the translation was bad on my side or the Japanese side. I will say this, almost every Japanese I've met, their English was far greater than my Japanese. So I'm not throwing stones. Now let's get back to soft plaque versus hard plaque. You see two very different types of plaque in the picture. The one on uh, your left, I believe it's your left, low IBS plaque, this one. As you see, there's an outline, a faint outline of plaque. And there's a couple of little shadows in there. On this one, the high IBS plaque, major calcification. And by the way, there are already plenty of studies which have been done which show you don't have to measure this plaque. They did actually measure it, and I'll show it to you in just a minute. Actually, I'll show it to you next. This was their um, objective measurement of echogenicity or the amount of white in, or calcium in this uh, these plaque images. They had two very very different populations here and this one the uh, what they call the echolucent plaque or the soft plaque fit with this dark one up here. These fit with the light ones. So what did that mean? So it's crystal clear, no, maybe you're not going to argue after seeing this, that there's a significant difference on the image, IMT image, of a soft plaque versus a hard plaque or calcified plaque. What did it mean in terms of events? Well, they followed these people for 30 months, 14 months on average. So we're talking a little over a year. Out of 100, about 100 in each group, 112 uh, people had soft plaque. Out of that group, there were 29 events. Did you hear that? Uh, let's make sure we understand that. 112 people followed for an average of 14 months with soft plaque, 29 events. Yeah, 103 people with calcified plaques, again, followed for about an average of 14 months, uh, four events. So very, very different set of risks. And now you understand why we will constantly say, look, if you've got soft plaque, we need to deal with that issue. You need to deal with that issue. We can't deal with it alone. We can give you some, you know, we can give you stuff. We can give you statins. We can give you metformin. But the big stuff is that 30 pound weight loss you need to do if you need to do that. Uh, some of the other lifestyle types of things. So let's look at this from a life table perspective if the numbers don't mean that much to you. This is a life table. The, it's called Kaplan-Meier. This dotted line 
is the number of, event, of events that happened among the 103 people with calcified plaque. This solid line dropped every time somebody in the other population, the 112, I think, had another event. So as you can see, soft plaque is very dangerous. If you made it this far, thank you very much for your interest. Looking forward to seeing you in uh, Louisville, November 8th and 9th. Get all your labs, your arterial scan, spend time one-on-one -on -one with me, and um, two days of intense focus on how to prevent your heart attack, stroke, dementia, blindness, kidney disease, erectile dysfunction. Looking forward to seeing you there.